Every day is a holiday with hot boys. I'm Happy Hot Boys. Uh-oh, there's a nice-looking couple in search of a home. Just wait till they see that hot point kitchen. And this cleverly designed kitchen comes completely equipped with the finest modern appliances. Oh, here's something I want in my home, a dishwasher. Well, I don't blame you, lady. This new 24-inch hot point dishwasher gets more attention than anything we've got in the house. It outwashes and outrinses every other dishwasher. In the first place, a hot point dishwasher washes everything twice, using fresh detergent each time. You just load these two cups with detergent and flip the cover into place. This is Richard Diamond of the Disintegrating Diamonds. Well, at least you're awake. Don't take any money on it, Samuel. You wanted me to make sure you were up. She's due at your home in about five minutes. Who's due? Dorian Crane. She lives on the right side of the tracks in Beverly Hills. What side is that? Uh, Mr. Diamond, the board looks like Santa Anita on getaway day. Uh, are you presentable? Sam, would I be talking to you if I weren't? Just checking. For Dorian Crane's sake. Bye. Goodbye, Sam. Mr. Diamond can't be disturbed. He's in an oxygen tent. Are you a bird? Mr. Diamond is going to lose some new clients. Clients with money? With money, Mr. D. There are a couple of brothers named Bale. They uh, recently inherited several orange groves and a packing house. Oh, yeah. yeah I remember reading about them a couple of weeks ago. Their father was uh, killed by some kind of machinery in his plan. And, well, I asked him to come out, Sam. I already did that. So, uh, stop with the Sleeping Beauty bit and uh, start with the energetic investigator scene. Ed, Sam, now hear this. One, quit trying to run my life. Two, stop hanging around those coffee houses. And three, start speaking English again, you understand? I dig men like, uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Sam. Yeah. Mr. Diamond, this is urgent. A man named Lou Morse phoned you, sounded real scared. Said to tell you to come back right away. That he's afraid for his life, but he won't call the police. He wouldn't wait to be put through to you. Look, Sam, call the sheriff in San Carlos. Tell him to get out there right away. I'm on my way there right now. Yeah, goodbye. Anyway, honey, you went through the part that time without a mistake. You're impossible. How do you expect me to rehearse when you're talking that silly thing? Well, I know I'll hate myself later for it. Sam, you have an uncanny knack for messing up my social life. Well, thank you, Mr. Diamond. That's just about the nicest thing anyone said to me all day. Well, now that your day is a success, what do you want? It's a Miss Louise Thompson. She sounds interesting. Uh, Diane, uh, honey, well, wait a minute. Uh, well, what does she want to talk to me about, Sam? Just said she had to talk to you, urgently. Uh, Diane, honey, now, please, listen. Uh, where, Sam? The Cameo Club on Sunset. Yeah, Louise Thompson Cameo Club on Sunset. Honey, and Di Diane, you haven't finished rehearsing yet. You disappoint me, Richard. Diane. Well, sometimes I disappoint myself. You sound like you need help, Mr. D. Not help, Sam. Sympathy. Well, maybe Miss Thompson has some. Well, that's for sure. I'm not getting much around here. I'll talk to you later. Sam. Is this it, Mr. Diamond? This, Samuel, is it. Okay, Mr. D, I'll take it from here. And good luck. Yeah, thanks.
Lieutenant Ross, please. Speaking. Lieutenant, I have an urgent message from Richard Diamond. What's on his mind? He said to tell you to get out to the sewage disposal plant as soon as possible. You don't say. That's kind of a strange place to be, even for Diamond. He's being taken there, Lieutenant. He said you'd understand. Oh, he did, did he? Well, you tell Diamond I'm not about to chase all over town on his screwball tips. Yeah? Mr. Diamond, please. Yeah, Sam, what do you want? No, it is you. I thought it was a big brown bear emerging from hibernation. No, honey, it's just a thumbs diamond. What do you want? Are you going to that big charity affair? Yeah, well, I am, Sam, if I can get this tie tied. Yeah. Know a girl named Nancy? Uh, Nancy Cheney. Yeah, she's the chairman of the committee for this affair. In fact, she's the one that got me into this whole thing. Mm. Well, she just phoned. She's all excited, and she wants you to come over to the hotel immediately. What's she getting excited about? I'm not supposed to be there till 10. I don't know. All she said was, I need him. Oh, brother. Well, Sam, if she calls back again, you tell her that I need her, too. No. Sam, to tie my tie. Goodbye. Bye, Mr. D. Tonight is the night. Tonight, sir. Uh, what night, Mr. D? What time do you get off, honey? In 20 minutes, but, uh... Well, I'm finally going to find out what's behind those dulcet tones of yours. I'll be right down. <sighs> Gee, Mr. Diamond, I... <sighs> what's the matter, Sam? Well, we're having a club meeting tonight, and I'm president. I just have to be there. Wait, you're having a club meeting this late? Sure. We're going to watch the Late Late Show. Sam, what type of club is this? The Dick Powell Fan Club. Goodbye, Sam. Well, there's one thing about running a restaurant. You always know where your next meal's coming from. Jeff, tell her I've learned my lesson. Have you? I have. Believe me, I have. I didn't make a cent on this whole Magilla. If it hadn't been for Jeff and Lieutenant Gilmore, I could have gone to jail. I was the one that didn't learn a lesson. No. No. He went off solid days. Bet Krause's entry. Blew his whole bankroll. Both dollars. <laughs> 77 Sunset Strip. 77 Sunset Strip. 77 Sunset Strip. Wears a fancy label It's glorified in song and fable The most exciting people pass you by Including a private eye 77 Sunset Strip 77 Sunset Strip 77 Sunset Strip What's him again, huh? I will. Come on, baby. Take it easy. I'll take it easy. I'll take it easy, baby. Come on. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Come on. How do you do? Would you mind if I ask you a few questions about the man that's been molesting you? No. Uh, this man, um, 
What did he want, exactly? I don't know. Uh, you both say that he's ugly. Uh, what does that mean? It's his face. There's something wrong with his face. It's all scarred or something. It, it's just horrible. There, there, baby. Take it easy, please. Look, I don't want you to worry about nothing. Mr. Staccato is here to see that everything is all right, just like I told you. No one will ever bother you again. <laughs> baby, please don't cry. Don't cry. When she cries, her eyes get so red. Do you see what this monster has done to her, huh? You see what this Venus has done? He has upset her so much that she will not win the contest, nor go to Hollywood, nor sign a contract, or, or anything. Do. Oh. <laughs> Hi there. I was just telling your father that uh, you're real good on a horse. Not many women can handle them like you do. Oh, it's not hard. Not if you know the trick. Oh, is there something I can learn? I think so. First, you have to distract your attention. Hey, look. Huh? Oh. Then you put them in their place. Then you, you keep them there. Otherwise, they think they're dealing with some damn tall girl who's more interested in good looks than good sense. And when they've learned their first lesson, you tell them to go on in the house and drink their coffee. Well, uh, since when do horses drink coffee? Since when have we been talking about horses? <laughs> I see what you mean. Would I be right in thinking that Mr. Kelly said a few words about me? <laughs> You'd be right. That's what I thought. Well, remember, a smart horse doesn't leave all she hears. 